In this video, we're just going to look at some of the post-lab questions for the percent water in a hydrate experiment that we did. So I'm turning over to the post-lab section. Um, at this point in the course, question number two and three are going to be a little bit difficult um, because we haven't yet discussed moles and molar masses. So I'm going to show you how to do question number two and then you'll apply that to number three. Um, first of all, back in question number uh, two, part one, we were given some information about a student trying to identify an unknown hydrate using the same procedure that we followed. We're told that they heated a 2.752 gram sample of the hydrated salt, and then after heating, it weighed 1.941 grams. We're told the student has three possible choices for their hydrate. It could be lithium nitrate trihydrate, calcium nitrate tetrahydrate, or strontium nitrate tetrahydrate. So first, calculate the percentage of water in the student's unknown. This is how I'd like to see your work shown, something to this effect, okay? If you just put an answer down for this, you're going to have to fix that. So the first thing I'm doing is finding the mass of water in the sample. So to do that, I took the mass of the hydrated salt and subtracted the mass of the anhydrous salt after heating. So the difference is the mass that was lost, which was water, so 0.811 grams of water. And notice I'm following the rules for significant digits. When you add or subtract, you round off according to the number of decimal places. So I've kept three decimal places in that answer. To find the percentage of water in the hydrate, we take the mass of water that was evolved, so 0.811 grams, and we're going to divide that by the mass of the hydrated salt, so in this case the 2.752 grams, and then times by 100. When dividing numbers with significant digits, you round off your answer to the lowest number of significant digits. So three significant digits in the numerator and four in the denominator, I'm keeping three significant digits in my percentage. So this sample had 29.5% water. Now, part two of question two says, could the unknown have possibly been strontium nitrate tetrahydrate? And explain your answer. Well, to find out, we're going to need a periodic table. Okay, we're going to need a periodic table to look at the atomic masses of these things. Strontium's atomic mass is 87.62 AMUs, and nitrogen is 14.01 AMUs, oxygen is 16.00 AMUs, and hydrogen 1.01 AMUs, atomic mass units. So what I'm going to do is take the formula for strontium nitrate, tetrahydrate, and I'm going to calculate its formula mass. So the formula mass. To do that, I'm going to look at that formula and break it apart into its pieces. So we have one strontium atom in that formula. There's two nitrates. In the two nitrates, there would be two nitrogen atoms, and there would be six oxygen atoms. Now some people would take the six oxygens here and add it to the four oxygens that are over here. There's four water molecules attached and every water has one oxygen, so there'd be another four oxygens there. And then they'd add eight hydrogens, four times two, eight hydrogens. What I'm going to do instead is simply take four and multiply by H2O, water's mass. So from the periodic table, one strontium would be 1 times 87.62 AMUs. Two nitrogens would be 2 times 14.01, and six oxygens, 6 times 16.00. Now, water, I'm going to just do a quick mental calculation. There's one oxygen and two hydrogens. So Oxygen is 16.00 AMUs, and each hydrogen is 1.01 AMUs. So one oxygen with two hydrogens would be 18.02 AMUs. So those are the masses in that formula. So that's going to give me 87.62 AMUs of strontium. It's 
going to give me 28.02 AMUs of nitrogen. Uh, 6 times 16 is 96.00 AMUs of oxygen. And then 4 times 18, let's see, 40 plus another 32, so 72.08 AMUs of water attached. And now I'm going to add all that up. This is going to be the formula mass of strontium nitrate tetrahydrate. So we've got, okay, so we have 87.62, the mass of strontium, plus 28.02, the mass of nitrogen, 96 for oxygen, 72.08 for water. The total formula mass is 283.72. AMUs. Now in that formula mass of 283.72 units, there were 72.08 units of water. So notice we could now calculate theoretically what the percentage of water in the strontium nitrate should be. It should equal 72.08 AMUs divided by 283.72, the total, times 100. And when we do that, we get an answer, 72.08 divided by 283.72 times 100. We get 25.4% water. So could the unknown have been this salt? Well, theoretically, the percent water should have been about 25%, but this student got an answer of 29, if you recall, 29.5% was their percentage of water. Now, in a real-world experiment, you might think that that's not that far off, and so you might say, well, yeah, maybe. But here we'll assume everything was done carefully, and we'll therefore say that a 4% error like that, 4% off, is not going to be uh, close enough. So we'll say, therefore, no. Okay, it was not this salt. Okay. Now, you don't have to show all of your work in this exactly the same detail that I've done here for part three, but what is the probable identity of the salt? Well, there are two other possible salts that it could have been. If you look back at the beginning of the question, we were told the salt could have been lithium nitrate trihydrate. It could have been calcium nitrate tetrahydrate. So go and do the calculation of formula mass. You don't need to show your work for that in part three. And then calculate the percentage of water in each of those other two salts. Hopefully, one of those two percentages is going to be closer to 29.5, the percent that, was got, that we got in the experiment. And then you can identify the salt by its percent water. So I hope that helps with the calculations um, for this lab.